What's going on everybody? It is now day 14 of me working on my house every day until I finish all of my home renovations. And today we're actually kicking off a new project which is going to be wrapping a basement stanchion pole in this walnut here. And today is really gonna be dedicated and this video is gonna be dedicated to just basically cleaning up all of these boards. You can see that these are rough sawn and obviously not ready for use. So in this video, I'm going to basically mill these down so that they are nice and smooth and they have a nice straight edge and two coplanar sides. And that's really all this video is gonna be about. So if you're interested in how you take a board from this to a board that is then ready to use, that's what this video is gonna be about. So let's get right into it. So if you've never milled up any boards from a sawmill or you've never even purchased boards from a sawmill you'll get them looking like like this pretty rough sawn you know they're they've got cups in them twists in them they're they're bowed they're not straight this is probably the worst one and the idea is to obviously get them as straight as possible before using them so that's what i'm going to do here and this board's a good example of kind of the first step that i'm going to do is cut them to their rough length so this board here is about 106 inches long. And when I am done with it, I only need it to be about 85 inches, which is about here. So if you look down this board, this last like 20 inches from this knot down really kicks out this way. So that would be really tough to get this board straight if you had to include this last 20 inches. But I can cut off most of this and then you're not trying to straighten out this very last chunk. And I'll go through every board and each one of them has either some type of twist in it where they're, they're real wobbly. And I'll just take off the end that has, you know, the worst twist or split. This one's got a split in the end. So I'll take off a little bit from this side, some down there if that end's not good either and just kind of work through and get them cut to their close to the final length that I need from them, which is 85 inches. So I'll probably cut these to like 95 just so I have, you know, five inches of, of leeway to work with them after I get them all milled up. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them to their length and then we'll move on to the next step, which will be jointing and planing them. All right, so I'm trying to decide. I got all of these cut to their rough length, but now I'm trying to figure out if I want to try and run these through my jointer to get one flat side. That's what a joint jointer does, is gives the material one perfectly flat side, so then you can flip it over, run it through the planer, and then it'll kind of match that one flat side to the other side. But some of these boards are just wider than my jointer bed, so that would make it really tough, and they're not straight, so a lot of it would be hanging off, and I don't think I can join all of them, plus these are pretty long boards to do on the jointer, so I'm thinking that I can either just send them through the planer, and there is a technique where you can send it through one way, really light pass, flip it over, really light pass, keep doing that, and eventually your board will be decently straight. But these ones got, this one especially has quite a bit of twist in it. And the problem is that if you send this through the planer, all it does is basically compress it. And as it's going through, it's obviously going to clean the surface, but it's gonna keep that twist in the board because it's just kind of pushing down and just maintaining that twist. So what you have to do is another technique that you can use the planer to basically joint something, but you have to send it through on what's called a sled, and you can basically put it on another board that is flat and support the areas where the planer might, you know, push them down if you put, you know, a shim 
up where those kind of high spots are. It'll make it so that the thing that the board runs through and it's only taking off the high points and it's not compressing the board down, which will then eventually give you a perfectly flat surface and then you can take it off of the sled flip it over and then you'll get a, a really nice straight board. I've done that a lot. I've done videos on that on my Instagram. That was one of my most popular videos that I ever posted. Millions of people watched it because it's a really cool technique, really cool trick, but I've never done it with something this long before. I basically need to take like an eight foot sheet of plywood to make that sled. And part of me really wants to just do the technique where you just do some light passes, send it through and basically see what you get flipping it over and it'll be pretty straight. And like I said, I'm making a box out of these. So I will be clamping everything and holding it together. So if there is any twist, you know, hopefully I can kind of, you know, clamp it out of it, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. I just wanted to explain the options and sit here and think about it a little bit longer. All right, I decided to go with the router sled option. So I went ahead and just cut out a 12 inch strip of plywood, which can easily handle these boards. It is eight feet long. These are just under eight feet. And I decided to go with this option one so I can get these as straight as possible because when you don't, when you, you know, try to rush things and you don't get your boards perfect, then it just becomes a big hassle when you're trying to put things together later. And I think this is a cool opportunity to show you guys this technique because it is cool and it's something that if you don't have a jointer is honestly a, a great option for anyone who doesn't want to invest in that and you know maybe just is getting started and has a planer, then this is definitely an awesome option for you. So the only thing you need for this is a piece of plywood. I'm going to be using a hot glue gun to kind of hold it in place and I like these little plastic shims. If they came with some, I think they were like tile shims and they work great just because they, the hot glue comes off of them really easy. You can also use wood shims, uh, but all I'm going to do is basically put the board, every board will go one at a time onto here, like so. And the whole objective is to basically stabilize the board so there isn't any rocking to it or flexing, you know, if it's bowed in the middle or kind of crowning, then you want to support the middle so it's it's not able to kind of push the board down or twist it as, it as it's going through. If you make it so that this thing, it can't move, then you're going to get a perfectly flat surface on this one side and then I'll be able to basically flip it over and mirror the one flat side that we have, giving the other side a perfectly I believe it's coplanar side as well. So I'm just going to go around, basically shim up any of the high spots or not shim them up, but just kind of support the high spots. Like at this back corner is pretty high. So I'll go ahead and put a shim in there. And then I just put a couple dabs of hot glue just to hold it in place. And then I can take it over to the planer and should get a nice flat surface. So here's a better visual of what we're trying to accomplish here. And I just want to make sure that I'm explaining this as best as I can, because I feel like, you know, so far, depending on your knowledge, you know, you may be like, what the hell is he talking about? And this, I think, is a really good view of, say this is going through the planer, there's rollers that basically pull it through that apply pressure down. When this goes through, this is kind of the highest point over here. You can see how bad that basically twists up. It's just going to basically push this down, you know, this side maybe two, but either way, it's gonna kind of push and just keep any twist that's in this board, it's just gonna kind of push it down. And what we wanna do is support that so it can't push it down. So if I put that shim under there, now it can't push it down at all. And now what that's gonna do is just shave off a little bit of this at, at a time. So I'll send it through multiple times and it's gonna keep shaving off this high point until it basically gets level. And I'll probably put a shim over here as well so that this can't move either. And that's just gonna shave it off and make sure that it's running through the same way every time and giving a nice flat surface. So just wanted to explain that one more time. And now I'm just gonna 
basically take this hot glue gun once these are in and just put dabs of hot glue just to kind of hold this in place and these will come right off after just to secure these and the boards I'll probably put another one right there and these hold better than you think so just a couple few dabs all around it and now I'll work all around this thing supporting wherever I think there might be some flex in the board I'll just add shims and then we'll go over to the planer So after the first pass on the sled, you can see how this was our highest point was this back corner that I showed me shimming up. So you can see it took the most off of this corner here. This corner is also a little bit high, so there is a cup in the middle of this board. And you can see how it took that off. And then it doesn't touch anything in the middle. And then this other corner that shimmed up quite a bit as well over here. It also took some off of there as well. And the difference here is that if I would have just sent this board through, not on this sled at all, you would have seen planar marks down this whole thing, which means that it would have just kept the original shape of the board without flattening anything out. So the fact that it took off just the high points and it will slowly take off all of those as we go through a couple more times and give us a perfectly flat surface. So now you can see that this is the board that I just sent through the planer. I flipped it over so now the side that I planed is down here. And you can see how that's perfectly flush now. There's no cup in it anymore. There's no rock in it anymore. And that is all the way down perfectly straight. No rock. Maybe a tiny bit down there. I don't know if I secured that corner great, but this is by far close enough. And now I can send it through the planer just like this, which then will basically mirror that bottom side, which is now flat, and give this a flat side as well. The only thing you have to watch out for is those, when it did have these high peaks, your highest points. So this is what I had shimmed over here. That's going to lose the most amount of material. So if you're trying to go for a certain thickness, just be careful of how much you're taking off to get it flat. I am right at like seven eighths and I want to finish this at about three quarters of an inch. So I have plenty of room to, to play with and this was probably my worst board so should be all good there. So now I'm going to flip this over, send it back through the planer and then this board should be good to then go to the jointer after I get all the rest of these done. So I'm going to do all of these now and then we'll talk about the jointer next.
all of the boards now have one nice flat side. All I have to do now is take it back to the planer, flip it over this way, and then basically take off a few layers, getting the board perfectly flat. And then from there, we'll head to the joiner. But for now, let's go back to the planer, run these through a few more times, and we'll be all set. All right, after all that planing, I now have some nice flat boards. You can see they came out really nice. That looks like a gap in the middle, but it's not. It's actually just the fact that these aren't straight. And obviously these boards, they're not, you know, perfect per se, but definitely something I can work with a lot better than what they were before. So now all I need to do is clean up one of these edges here. Obviously it's still very rough on both sides, so. I'll take these over to the jointer, which will give them a straight edge, and the edge will be 90 degrees to the board, to the face of the board. Well, all right, if you ask me that these look obviously a million times better than they did at the beginning of this video, got them all flattened out, got one edge that is nice and square and flat. The last step in this process would be to rip the other edge off to the final dimension that I'm looking for, but I don't know what I want the final dimension of these to be yet. I'm going to be using these to wrap a basement pole, build kind of like a column around it, and I will start on that tomorrow. So once I figure out kind of the dimension of, of the box post that I'm going to be making, I will then cut those down. So that will be coming up tomorrow, but I'm happy to have gotten these all milled up today and that I got to show anybody who might be interested in what it looks like to take some rough sawn lumber and turn it into more dimensional lumber. These turned out to be just, got them a little bit thicker than three quarters, which is Totally fine, as long as they're all uniform and the same, it'll work out just fine. So if anyone was interested in that, just wanted to kind of share my process. And tomorrow I will start building the box post, so I'll see you then.